Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We're live in Abuja. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. Thanks for joining us. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. We start with the judiciary today where the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has granted permission to the detained Deputy Commissioner of Police, BCP Abakiari, to file more evidence against the suit by the federal government seeking to extradite him to the United States of America for trial in a criminal charge. Justice Iyang Eko granted a request made through his counsel, Nureni Jimo, SAM. He prayed the court to allow Kiari bring additional exhibits to establish his innocence in the charges against him. The prosecution counsel, Pius Akuta, who opposed the request, said it was an attempt by Kiari to cure deficiencies in the earlier evidence presented by him. Justice Eko overruled the prosecution's objection and granted permission for Kiari to adduce further exhibits in his own defense. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria have called for more investments in the judiciary arm of government to enable it to discharge its constitutional duties effectively. The many appeal while discussing judiciary in the 23 years of Nigeria's unbroken civil rule. Over now to Gadba Nata'ala. Judiciary, which is the third arm of government, is considered by many as the backbone of the democratic government in view of its constitutional mandates. We, are, we, are, we can only be very uh, cosmetic if we say that the, the judiciary has performed, the judiciary has been unable to perform optimally. The guests, however, noted with satisfaction the laudable contribution of the judiciary in the last 23 years as judicial officers continue to work towards stability, peace and orderliness in the country. We need to do a lot more, whether it's in terms of investment, whether it's in terms of scrutiny in the appointment of judicial officers, there is a whole lot more required to be done. The guests were emphatic on the issue of judicial independence, conduct of lawyers, recruitment of judges, and adequate funding to the judicial arm. The NJC, NJI, and other aspects of uh, that contribute towards this appointment are all under the executive, including the appointment process, their working conditions, let their the accountability, even within the judiciary itself. They emphasized the need to strengthen the judiciary to continue to effectively deliver justice to all manners of people as enshrined in the constitution. In Abuja, Garba Natala, NTA News. A presidential aspirant on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, says he will rehabilitate internally displaced persons in Bakasi and expand the Calibre Seaport in order to transform the economic fortunes of Cross River State. The aspirant made the promise while seeking the support of APC delegates in Cross River State ahead of the party's presidential primary. Justina Etim reports that the meeting was held in Calibre aspirants have continued to make last-minute efforts to secure victory at the forthcoming All Progressives Congress presidential primary. This meeting of the former governor of Lagos State, Senator Bola Tinubu, with delegates and stakeholders of the APC in Cross River State is not far from it. We will create commodity market The way we will do it will be different. It's not giving you based on our information. We create small business lending. 
In company of the presidential hopeful is the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Ganduje, who says Tinubu's achievements in Lagos State speak volumes of his ability to restore Nigeria to a progressive and prosperous nation. In unity in diversity, we need in money, we need a man that can bring light. Senator Bola Tinobu is also the national leader of the All Progressives Congress. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. Still on politics, stakeholders of the All Progressives Congress, particularly the support groups, are intensifying efforts in ensuring a hedge free presidential primary. Professor Yemi Oshibajo Volunteers Support Network has pledged logistic support to delegates. Sally Uguanara completes the report. Like an adage that says, one tree does not make a forest. Vice President Yemi Osibajo is one of the APC presidential aspirants, and this group is out to, on his behalf, assist the party to make the forthcoming primary a success. We have set made arrangements for their health care, for their accommodation, for their logistics, transport, both intra uh, transportation and inter transportation into the state. We will continue to provide strategic direction for the PYO support network ecosystem and enable the volunteering across 36 states to be effective, inclusive, and sustainable for an inclusive and sustainable post-elections. This is a critical moment in the annals of Nigeria's democracy and of course in the firmament of our decision-making process as a party. It is very critical that our stakeholders, party stakeholders, critically assess the process, zoom in, and of course support our, 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 our leader. The party has already named about 18 subcommittees for its special convention and presidential primary schedule to hold on the 6th to 8th June 2022. In Abuja, Sadio Guanara, NTA News. The Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria says the planned rehabilitation of runways 18R slash 36L at the international wing of the Mutala Mohammed International Airport Lagos slated for this weekend between 6 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock in the afternoon is not going to hinder flight operations. A statement by the acting Corporate Affairs General Manager Faithful Hope Ibaze says, contrary to reports in the social media that the rehabilitation work would lead to diversion of international flights to Ghana and Cotonou during the period, runway 18L slash 36R will be in use for flights as scheduled, while maintenance will be ongoing on runway 18R slash 36L as all flights continue unhindered. And it's time to join our Benin Network Center where Obehi is our guide. Good afternoon to you. Thanks, Hawa, for joining us here in Benin on Nationwide. The re-conclusion of the primaries for the 2023 general elections in Edo State signals the beginning of intense electoral activities. Candidates and their political parties will now shift attention from the delegates to the electorates. I highlighted the expectations of the post-primaries phase in this report. The post-primaries phase is another opportunity for parties and their candidates to sharpen campaign strategies. However, unlike the primaries where few delegates were wooed, this is a time to sell themselves to the general public. We are talking of dollarization now of Nigerian politics, but that is not what it should be. Rather, it's who you are, what is your pedigree. What do you have for us? How effective will you be in terms of representation if you are coming from Edo State? I think these are the things that we hope should happen in the days ahead. The uh, parties will be trying to convince ele electorates that their own party flag bearer is better than the other party flag bearer. These respondents advise that political parties should strong campaigns of calumny and also use this time to address issues of double candidates and any other discord within the party that might affect their chances. We expect them now to start, first of all, reconciling within themselves if disagreements that must have occurred. 
in time of carrying gunners, but let them go and toss their voters' card, encourage their friends also to go and renew their voters' card and have somebody of integrity and vote. What we want from these politicians, we want people who can be selfless. Ahead of the election, INEC has set 23rd September 2022 for the commencement of campaigns for presidential and national assemblies, while campaigns for governor and state assemblies is to kick off 12th October this year. And ahead of the 30th June deadline for continuous voters registration exercise, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, wants all stakeholders to be more proactive in raising awareness for participation. The resident electoral commissioner in Ondo State, Rufus Akeji, also urged political parties to embark on voter education to reduce incidences of void votes. Doris Ulumoko has details. The registration figure in Ondo State stands at 123,981. However, from previous registration exercise in the states, um, we still have about 296,965 permanent voters' card yet to be collected. With about eight months to the 2023 general elections, it is therefore expedient that the Independent Natural Electoral Commission, INEC, bring Nigerians up to speed on preparations. <laughs> Also, provide the opportunity for transfer of voter card, adjustment of laws and interface of voter card, and update of voter status. At the end of the continuous voters registration exercise, a nationwide automatic identification system will run on all registrations, and those register more than once will be fished out, their names expunged from the register. And we prosecuted eligible Nigerians who are 18 years and above and have not registered. I encourage to come out on mass uh, register before the 30th of June closing date because there will be no shift in dates. In Akure, there is Kulumoko, 18 years. And that's it from Benin. Nationwide continues after this break. Please stay with us. Thanks for rejoining us. It's still nationwide. The Federal Inland, Inland Revenue Service says it will commence the enforcement and recovery of unremitted tax deductions owed by some states and local governments in Nigeria. The Executive Chairman Mohammed Nami on Wednesday ceded on the federal government's official Twitter account that the service would also publicly name and shame the defaulting states and local governments. He said the tax authority had noted that many states and local governments failed to remit withholding and value-added tax deductions from payments made to contractors and service providers as required by law. A notorious foreigner and terrorist informant has been arrested by troops in Ngarua village in Tambua local government area of Sokoto State. The Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Bernard Onyako, who announced this in Abuja, says the criminal was apprehended by troops of Operation Hader in Daji following a credible intelligence report. troops arrested a notorious foreigner by name Jabe Buba, a terrorist informant at Garua village in Tambua local government area of Sokoto State. Some pictures were seen with him posting rifles in the forest. Similarly, troops of Operation Hadden Kai in the northeast have rescued a hundred members of terrorist families while 15 among the unrepentant terrorists were eliminated. Troops of Operation Hader and Daji also rescued 152 kidnapped victims. Notably on 24th May, they responded to a distress call on a kidnapping incident along Road Sakibian, Uba, in Delhi State, after a gun battle, the leader of the group, one Mr. Odada, and two other kidnappers, who are all dressed in military uniforms, were neutralized.
Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the armed forces commend the media for effective reportage of ongoing operations urging the public to sustain their support. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army says an improvised explosive device allegedly planted by members of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, and its armed wing, Eastern Security Network, has exploded, causing severe injuries to two members of the outlawed group. A statement by the director, Army Public Relations Brigadier General Onye Manwachuku, indicates that the incident occurred along a K Ututu Osu Road in Osu local government area of Imo State on Wednesday. It states that affected members of the proscribed group inadvertently stepped on the IED which they had earlier planted along the troops' patrol routes. The army urges people of the South East to avail the troops with possible areas where the explosives have been buried for proper evacuation and disposal. And our Enugu Network Center is next. Tine, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Hawa. Welcome to Enugu. About 500 farmers in Anyiri, Isuzo, and Utano East local government areas of Enugu State have benefited from the International Fund for Agricultural Development Value Chain, Enugu State. Okechuku Agobama reports that the vulnerable farmers were given farm inputs to boost food production in the state. As one of the benefiting states of the International Fund for Agricultural Development Value Chain Development Program, IFAD and VCD in the Southeast Enugu State, plug of rural poor stimulus facilities in Amiri, Isuzo, and Kanu East local government to cushion the effect of COVID 19 pandemic on vulnerable farmers. Representing the Governor of Enugu State, Commissioner for Agriculture, commended gesture and we echo the need for the farmers to make delicious use of those inputs. On behalf of the Excellency, the Governor of Enugu State, I stand here. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development represented emphasized the need for more adequate production of rice for food sustainability. And this part, we have a grant to the Federal Council to support the farmers because of the effects of COVID-19. We have our normal VCD program, and our plan is that after distributing this one to the specific number, we will extend it under a different arrangement. It's for us to give to the farmers free. These are the farmers. These farmers have their own land. The process started August last year when we visited all these farmers in their farms. We captured them. Farm inputs distributed among the vulnerable farmers were 50 kilograms of the fried rice seed per farmer, two bags 50 kg MPK each, one bag of oil farbine, and selective and non selective herbicides. In Enugu, Okechuku, Akobama, NTA News. A purported natural gas fire within the premises of a university in Enugu State, which has lasted for some days now, has caught the attention of relevant authorities and key players in Enugu, and they want the state and federal government to ensure that the natural resource is fully harnessed. This is Amor Jinike in Enugu East local government area of Enugu State. Within the premises of a university here, lies a natural resource waiting to be tapped. A recent video on the social media about a fire eruption suspected to be natural gas fire within the premises of a university in Enugu, which was said to have refused to abate for some days now, drew the attention of the NTA news crew. I received a distress call uh, from one Indian man informing me that they, they were drilling Boho and they, to, they met uh, something they, they suspect to be gas. So immediately I mobilized my men, knowing the danger posed by that as a hydrocarbon uh, product. But it continues coming out with the same pressure. Enugu state is a coal city state and sedimentary state in terms of its geology.
with that we have hope that uh, it will show up the resources of the states and of the nation in general. Since last year, we will up the program about uh, gas expansion program, whereby we will use uh, natural gas in place of fuel to drive our vehicles and industrial activities. Natural gas is essential to the manufacturers, to industries, for the success of image. And even the oil all over the world now, they are now talking of converting fuel, petroleum power car to gas power car. If things work as expected, it means something big is about to happen here. And those are the stories from Enugu Hawa. It's back to you in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Very well, Chinene. And a report just in says President Mohamed Buhari this Thursday in Madrid, Spain, met with two Spanish companies doing business in Nigeria, assuring them of a safe, secure and prosperous country. The president, while engaging GB Foods, which grows tomatoes in Kabi State and employs about 5,000 people, noted that security is one of the cardinal objectives of the administration. He also promised protection for local farmers against smuggling and dumping of foreign products. Chairman of GB Foods, Ato Karula, described the company as a family business now in its third generation in Africa with products 100% locally manufactured, promising to double down. At another meeting with Nautigy, a leading Spanish gas company, the president expressed pleasure that the outfit has established a steady partnership with Nigeria in the oil and gas industry. Francisco Rain, chief executive officer of Nautigy, said its first contact with Nigeria was in 1992, and since then they have become one of the largest buyers of liquefied natural gas. He said NATOG was interested in extending its relationship with Nigeria on gas, citing its 178 years experience in the business. To education now, academic activities are gradually picking up at the Federal Polytechnic, Mekadi Oweri, following the suspension of the two-week winning strike and backed upon by the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, ASUP. Rina Obasi, who visited the institution, has more. This is one of the classrooms where students receive lectures and they are seated waiting to commence lecture. Let's find out from some of them how they feel now that the strike is over. We're excited. That's why our student is everywhere and everywhere is booming and we are very, very happy like this. In the years we have stayed in school, it's really affecting us. We've lost a lot and um, with this, I'm expecting a rush, a rush from our lecturers. From the outlook of the school environment, it can be observed that the directive on resumption of academic activities, effective Monday, May 30, 2022, has been complied with at the Federal Polytechnic Mecca de Imo State. While some students are already in class receiving lectures, it appears some students are yet to return as the school population is still scanty. <laughs> A lecturer in the institution, Dr. Linda Ikechuku, who was cited in class, says they are ready to attend to students. This is something we've been praying for, that the strike does not go beyond two weeks. And now that the strike has been suspended, we expected that they will um, come in full capacity to, you know, take off. There are still other demands that are remaining, that uh, we are still fighting for. So, uh, we are still going to meet in this June. With this resumption, the students are hopeful that all pending issues will be resolved to avoid a relapse. In Oweri, Rina Obase, NTA News. And from Oweri, we go to Mina, where in continuation of efforts to allow its workforce acquire new skills and add value to governance, the Niger State Government is partnering the Industrial Training Fund to propel effective service delivery in the state. To this effect, a memorandum of understanding has been signed between the Niger State Government and the Industrial Training Fund. Fatima Usman completes the report. 
This signifies a new dawn for Niger State workforce across Kada towards building and enhancing their capacity in an ever-changing corporate world. The agreement, which went through series of amendments, seek to allow the trainee acquire new skills, sharpen existing ones to increase productivity. It also aimed at guaranteeing a close and formidable working relationship to meet specific skill gap. Director General Industrial Training Fund was represented at the event. We have support across both management, technical courses, financial, ICT. The time you carry out your job, how you finish it, it matters a lot because time is money. Is one of those factors that we consider. We hope to achieve a new aspect of capacity building in the civil servant so that the civil servants can compete with colleagues elsewhere in the world. Um, take and leave. We might take 100 for a start. And as we see the progression, we increase the tempo. Industrial Training Fund since 1971 has been in the forefront of promoting and encouraging the acquisition of skills in industries to meet the needs and aspirations of Nigerian economy. In Mina, I am Fatima Usman, NTA News. The Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Talon, is to lead a World Women Conference to sue for global peace through a framework for the prevention of genocide from the women's perspective. She said this when the Special Advisor to the UN Secretary General on Genocide, Alice Ndoritu, paid her a visit in Abuja. The report. In most countries of the world, identifying the risk factors that may trigger crimes such as genocide has become a cause for concern to women and other stakeholders. Aware of the consequences of these atrocities, especially in developing countries, and the role of women in the restoration of peaceful coexistence informed the visit of the UN advisor on genocide. We know always it never works for people to close a door and make decisions about other people and expect those other people to implement those decisions. So any decisions without women is not possible for any peace to ever come unless we have women at the table. And I know we've talked about women at the table for a long time, but I'm now specifically talking about women at the table from a different perspective, not the perspective of justice building, but from the perspective of the mandate that I hold. And the mandate that I hold is the prevention of genocide. Women Affairs Minister Pauline Tallinn believes that the message of unity, peace and love for one another is apt in Nigeria, considering the present challenges facing the nation. When you want to make the world a better place, make the women happy. And when the women are happy, there will be peace around the world. We will keep talking. We will keep advocating for the honor and for having family worthy to lead the other African women leaders for us to work and find solutions to issues affecting genocide and all forms of violence within our region. The delegation wants the minister, Paul Italian, to lead a peaceful advocacy to the global level. In Abuja, Ngozi Technico, NTA News. And it's time to join Kendi in Lagos for updates and major reports from that zone. Kendi, it's over to you. Thank you all, and we're glad to have you join us in Lagos. It was the second day of the ban on commercial motorcycle activities in Lagos. Ingenuijan Adams monitored the situation and brings back this report. There are signs of robust roads. evidence that the ban on motorcycles is effective. Before the ban, this road was characterized by clusters of motorcycle riders, each trying to gain the attention of prospective passengers. The ban has now changed the narrative. 
Bola Aborodi, a safety professional, speaks on dangers caused by commercial motorcycle operators. We go to a lot of these uh, autopedic hospitals. Most of the patients there, they have uh, occurred, uh, they, are, they experience occurred accidents. Affirming what Bola said, I was a victim of motorcycle accident, which left me with unfading scars. Constant reminders of the horrific experience. Some residents say the ban is a good decision. I think it's a very good idea to ban uh, the Okada because of the uh, accident, the occurrence of accident that has been going on. In most advanced countries of the world, you can't see people running transportation with Okada or motorcycles or whatever you call them. So it's a menace. We need to do things right. The Lagos State Police Command is working tirelessly to ensure the roads are free of commercial motorcycles. We still had um, a few people doing permitted speed span and they were, they were arrested. The riders and the passengers were arrested and um, some motorcycles too, or all of the motorcycles were bounded. The ban is still young and compliance is at the extreme. Lagos residents are hopeful that the roads will maintain their new look even after a long time. In Lagos, King Yunu know, John Adams, NTA News. While Port of Regulatory Agencies are advocating multimodal approach to cargo delivery and evacuation, safety and efficiency must be prioritized. This stands, however, will shift the operations of badge services as effort are on to draw up a standard operating procedure for them. Marco Lolale has a report. Gross in volume of trade comes at a cost, especially at the Apapa Trade Corridor, where congestion slows down turnover time and invariably build up traffic. But the solutions are here, with more options coming on board. Barge operation tends to be handy and has been projected to handle not less than 2 million containers through the Nigerian inland waterways annually by 2025. But the major concerns here range from double stacking of containers to lack of communication system. Some weeks ago, a badge sneaked out to go and operate and it bruised a vessel that was offloading liquid cargo. Imagine if that thing has gone aflame. The same way we created minimum safety standard for trucks, we have also created for badges and we have called them for meetings. As a starting point with their regularization, the Nigerian Post Authority, MPA, has frozen the licensing of new operators and we introduce in the new manner the specific time of the day for operations. One coinage derives from the introduction of the electronic call-up system is that the worst of veto is better than the old regime and as a way to further ease movement of cargoes in and out of the ports. Regulatory agencies are backing up the removal of illegal checkpoints with the introduction of roster specifying those on duty while MPA will consolidate the introduction of a second electronic call-up app. It's just to create competition and also give people alternatives. If today it is attacks and it takes four, five, six days, one week to bring it back up, we're all in trouble. So it's a necessity. The port community is hoping that once the Tinkan Island Port Access Road is completed, there will be relief along the corridor. In Lagos, Michael Alaleye, NT News. And that's a contribution from Lagos. But before we go, we'd like to remind you that you should, for, you should not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and our older social media handles displayed on your screen. We'll take a short break now. Nationwide continues with our debates. Thanks for rejoining us. Now to Energy Matters. The federal government is challenging players across the value chain of the electricity industry to work in synergy and address the current challenge of epileptic power supply. The Minister of Power, Abubakar Ali, said that these were inaugurating the governing board of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, in Abuja. Over now to Joshua Ojitu. Seven years of operation without a governing board, 14 members now inaugurated to serve in the board of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. Coming at a time the company is 
grappling with challenges of vandalism or power infrastructure, right-of-way issues by communities along power lines, as well as liquidity crisis. The new governing board is expected to step in to resolve all issues impeding transmission infrastructure projects. I call on you to speak and act outside the boardroom with one voice. The power sector is on fast track to deliver service to Nigerians. There's a lot that you have to do in order to change uh, the narratives uh, in the power sector. This board is going to focus on providing an efficient, sustainable grid for effective delivery of services to Nigerians. I'm also happy to have a board coming with rich wealth of experience to support TCN in achieving its mandate of William Power to the, to the nation in the most efficient and effective way. Beyond the boardroom, decisions taken by the governing council are expected to yield results, thereby increasing capacity of the transmission networks to wheel power generated to end users. Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Weeks after resumption in public primary schools in Benue State, the school feeding program is yet to commence. Sandra Dowesi Akeme, who visited some schools in Makudi, reports that pupils are appealing to the relevant authorities to do the needful so that the vendors can commence food distribution. The arrival of the NTA crew in most of the benefiting schools in the homegrown feeding program was mistaken for food vendors who usually serve these pupils. However, their hopes were dashed as the aim of the visit was different. They are not always coming by Bolek. We have Rizu, we have not seen them. Sometimes they are giving the junior ones, but sometimes they are not giving the primary four, five and six. The portion of the food is not too bad, but it's not um, what we take in our homes as share of the children's food anyway, but it's acceptable. The children keep asking when are they coming, when are they coming, because most of the children are the vulnerable ones. For vendors in the homegrown feeding program, they are constrained by the non-release of funds for them to purchase food items. We've not been paid. But as soon as, as soon as we are paid, we go immediately. The challenge that we, we face is that it is very expensive. Uh, the cost of things has been so high such that when the vendors find it difficult to meet up the required number of days for them to feed. He advised vendors who have issues with their bank accounts to rectify them to avoid delay in accessing their money. In Makudi, Sandra Dorisi Akeme, NTA News. Health now. The call to address the high rate of unintended pregnancies in Nigeria and ensure independence in women's health choices has re-echoed as the federal government partners the United Nations Fund for Population Activities, UNFPA, to launch the 2022 State of the World Population Report in Abuja. Olushe Adeabo completes the report. <laughs> The State of the World Population Swap is an annual UNLPA's report with the latest edition revealing that nearly half of all pregnancies totaling 121 million each year throughout the world are unintended. The research work also states that globally an estimated 257 million women who want to avoid sex are not using safe modern methods of contraception and where data is unavailable, nearly a quarter of all women are not able to say no to sex. In Nigeria, a record of 2.5 million pregnancy cases are reported to be unintended annually. Worrisome data it is for these actors in populations management, women advocates and healthcare policy makers. Of course. When one is raped and the resulting effect is a pregnancy that you are forced to keep, there's no way you can love that child. We go on, work with the UNFPA, 
to take care of family planning in a very responsible way. We have annual assessed payment for commodities of four million dollars, four million US dollars, which ensure effective and sustained media engagement and campaign at all levels to mitigate unintended pregnancies. The writings on the cover page of the 2022 SWAP report saying the insane, the case for action in the neglected crisis of unintended pregnancy from the submissions from these key players in national response in Abuja, Olusheye, Adiago, and C News. The National Human Rights Commission is engaging media practitioners and the national on the national safety mechanism in defending the rights of journalists and media practitioners. Amenka Amarachiko reports that the engagement affords the media practitioners the opportunity to brainstorm on effective ways of reducing hazards in the journalism profession. Issues and violations of rights of journalists has been of growing concern in Nigeria and other countries of the world, given that most media men operate under difficult conditions, especially in developing countries. To equip journalists to overcome the challenges they face in their roles in nation building, the National Human Rights Commission is organizing the training to mainstream the issues on the front burner. This training is designed as a give back, as a corporate social responsibility on the part of the Commission to the journalists. This is because we value the partnership between you and us. In designing the template for this training, issues pertaining to conflict, reporting and hazards of journalism, the new media and challenges of freedom of expression, communication and safety rules for journalists, we are carefully included. We want these capacity buildings to ensure that journalists are well trained to address major issues like that before the nation. The engagement will also introduce the media practitioners to the global best practices in Abuja, Umenka, Smachiku, NTNU. And in a bid to improve reading culture amongst pupils, wife of the Benue State Governor, Dr. Eunice Otum, has organized a spelling bee competition for children at the internally displaced persons camp in Daudu, the local government area of Benue State. Grace Ichepa reports that the event is the seventh in the series organized by her pet project, Eunice Spring of Life. Annual Spelling Bee to mark the 2022 Literacy Day was organized at the Internally Displaced Persons Camp 3 in Daudu to carry the children at the camp along. The children who participated in the Spelling Bee competition said they are happy as the opportunity will help them to improve on their spellings and reading habits. I gave me a lot and I'm very, very appreciative. I feel very happy. The first position winner of this competition organized by the Union Spring of Life Foundation to Master Pena Nyesu. Congratulations. Wife of the Benue State Governor, Dr. Yunit Otum, urged stakeholders to contribute their quota to the educational development of the IDPs as they are part of the society with equal rights, just like others. Since the inception of the literacy project, we have recorded over 5,000 school children whom we have directly engaged. School materials were presented to the various IDPs camp that were represented at the event. From Daudu, Gumaluka government area, Grace Anyalewa, Ichepa, NTA News. And from Makuri to Barunu states where the Kebi state governor, Abubakar Bagud was loaded achievements recorded by the Barunu state governor, Baba Gana Umar Zulum, in rebuilding the lives and communities of people devastated by over a decade long insurgency in the state. This was during a visit to one of the agricultural transformation projects, the 3,000 hectare Damasak mega rice farm in Mubar, local government area of northern Burma. Mohamed Goni completes the report. Headquarters of Mobile Local Government in Northern Borno, where the mega palm is located, is on the fringes of Lake Chad, 
and was one of the Boko Haram's strongholds before it was liberated by the Nigerian military. The farmers in the resettled communities were supported with improved seeds and fertilizers, among other inputs, to engage in irrigation farming early this year as part of recovery efforts and to resuscitate their means of livelihood. We are celebrating the return of normalcy in Damasak and other parts of Borno State, courtesy of the leadership that is provided by my very, very evil, courageous brother, the executive governor of Borno State. We are expanding production uh, even at a time when the Russia-Ukraine war is impacting on food supply and food prices is equally more heartwarming. Governor Zilum said the activation of irrigation farming has increased Borno's local sourcing of vegetable against having to bring from elsewhere. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NT News. Sports update is next. Runners up in Group B of the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022 qualifying tournament in Belgrade, Mali, have been invited to replace Nigeria's D Tigress in the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup in Australia. FIBA's decision comes after the deliberations with the Nigeria Basketball Federation (NBBF) to see how the decision could be rescinded for the defending African champions to represent the continent. Recall that in May, the federal government withdrew Nigeria from international basketball for two years following lingering leadership crisis in the Niger Basketball Federation. Nigeria wouldn't have anywhere to be had. We had to put all these things together. But how many do we want to do? So we felt that it would be better for us to re-strategize. Try to put the house in order. In another development, safety shooters of Abuja hope to bounce back from their disappointing loss to defending champions Kanu Pillars when they take on Niger United in their final match of the first phase of the Prudent Energy Handball League Thursday evening in Abuja. Abuja Andrew. Goes on one himself to the roof of the net. Pillars have won 10 straight games while in some matches decided earlier on Thursday. Rima Strikers of Sokoto beat Owena Kings 36 to 24 goals and Toji Marine Academy were 38 to 31 goals better than Benue Kings. Elsewhere, the British High Commission in Nigeria has pledged to render necessary assistance to Nigeria's contingent to the 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, especially in the area of visas. This was reviewed at an interactive session between the Embassy and Nigeria Olympic Committee in Abuja on Thursday. We have to do all the processing we are expected to do and pass through the normal channel and the visa will be issued without delay. We discussed the preparations, we heard about the preparations that the Olympic Committee here are making and we discussed about the visa process for members of the Games family. The 2022 Commonwealth Games will hold from July 28th to August 8th. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Makinde NTA News. We stand against rape and rapists here at the MTA. Be our partner. And that's Nationwide Today. We thank you for watching. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. Good evening.